million board feet of lumber was used to, to build this. 1,072 foot long, 296 feet wide, and they're 192 feet tall structures. The footprint is about seven acres. If the roof laid flat, it would be about 12 acres. This building was engineered an engineering marvel in its day and is today. Tillamook Hangar B is the only one of the seven hangars that are left that allow the public to still enter. Thank you all for being here. Everybody hear me okay? Can you hear me now? Okay. I'm going to give a short history on Hangar B and the Tillamook Air Museum and Naval Air Station Tillamook, of which Hangar B was a part. So, first of all, I would like to thank the uh, Friends of Tillamook Air Museum for putting this event on and helping to save this historic hangar be 80 years old, can you believe it? 80 years old in four days, actually, to get technical about it. Well, thank you for visiting with us today. So, Hangar B here is one of two hangars that were built during World War II to house airships that were used for anti-submarine patrol for Japanese submarines up and down the coast here. Now, each airship that was stationed in the hangar here is about 250 feet long and about 80 feet in diameter. Extremely large airships. So, of course, you couldn't house them outside because it was as windy as it is here on the Oregon coast. They would literally blow away. So you needed to build a hangar large enough to house at the minimum, six airships. Now, the hangar had to be at least 1,000 feet wide, excuse me, 1,000 feet long, 300 feet wide, and 200 feet tall. After Pearl Harbor, the Japanese submarine threat was out there. How best to deal with it? Well, we're going to build a fleet of airships to be able to spot these enemy submarines. You have the airship, and then you have the gondola, which is about the size of a school bus and had large plexiglass windows for each blimp crew member to spot an enemy submarine. The problem was, is when they chose to build the base and build the hangar, it was about the worst possible time you could ever think to build anything. It was November of 1942, and if any of you are familiar with what the weather is like here on the coast in November, it is not exactly ideal for building. And of course, you couldn't wait for nicer weather, or you'd be waiting till the next August. So waiting was not an option. So they attempted to build the hangar, and there was not enough local labor, let alone experienced labor. So the Navy actually advertised and attempted to recruit workers all the way back in the Midwest to try to get people to come out here to work on the hangars. In fact, they'd pay for your trip out here if you stayed on the job long enough, though. They didn't want anybody who just wanted a free trip out to the coast here. So you can imagine all these workers who knew what Oregon was, but had never been to Tillamook before, had no idea what the weather was like, what the climate was like, what the people were like. But there was a war going on. They wanted to do their duty for Uncle Sam, help defeat the Japanese. And so they came out here and they started building that November of 1942. And what happens? The sky opened up. It rained like mad. 15 inches of rain they had that month of November 1942. Bulldozers were getting stuck in the mud. The workers all donned their wellies and trudging around through the mud. So foggy, you literally couldn't see 10 feet in front of you. They actually had to string telephone lines so workers on the hangar floor here could communicate with workers at the top of the hangar here. So you can imagine the workers standing around talking amongst themselves, going, ah, is this like this all the time here? But we need to get the hangar built. We're gonna work as hard as we possibly can. Talking amongst themselves, thinking, okay, this is one bad month. There's no way things are gonna get any worse. But this is the Oregon coast in fall and winter. And it does get worse. So the next month, they actually got 16 inches of rain, an inch more than they had the previous month. And again, you can just imagine the workers standing around, talking amongst themselves, 
Okay, that was two bad months of rain. Meanwhile, they've got a few trusses, a few wooden trusses here, completed. It's not going to get any worse. Statistically, it can't get any worse. But of course, it did get worse because this is the Oregon coast. In January of 1943, they got 17 inches of snow, which is just about unheard of to get that amount of snow here in any one month. It was the worst fall winter that we had had in the previous 25 years, which just happened to coincide with when they built the hangar. But finally we had spring and then summer and they were able to get one truss after the other up and completed. And hangar B here was finally completed in August of 1943. A total of nine months is what it took them, which is pretty miraculous given the conditions that they had to build this thing under. Now, as Gene mentioned, there's about three million board feet of lumber. That is about enough lumber to build 280 three-bedroom homes. That gives you an idea of the amount of natural resources expended for the war effort. And then, of course, we had two hangars out here, Hangar A, that burned down in a tragic fire back in, back in August of 1992. So finally the hangars were completed in August of 43. The blimps went out on patrol looking for Japanese submarines. Their patrol area was quite large actually compared to most other naval air stations that operated airships during the United States. So they would travel north, sometimes up into Canada to do air or sea rescues, but mainly up north, almost up into Canada, around the Strait of Juan de Fuca, and then down south into Northern California where there was a lot of overlap with some naval air stations down in that area. So the blimps performed a valuable service for us during the Second World War, looking for Japanese submarines on this coast. And then you had other air stations also operating blimps on the east coast and down south, looking for the German submarines, the U-boats. They had a, an amazing track record, which a lot of people don't realize. So. Airships watched over about 80,000 merchant ships and convoys during the Second, War, Second World War, and not one merchant ship was ever lost to enemy attack after the airships were out there on patrol. The whole idea behind the airships was as a deterrent. So if you were an enemy submarine and you would submerge, and you knew an airship might be patrolling, you wouldn't want to surface because you wouldn't want an airship to be able to spot you because they could call out air surface support to destroy you, to blow you out of the water. So it does not appear that there was any record of an engagement, a battle between an airship from the former Naval Air Station Tillamook and Japanese submarines. All the pertinent records have all been declassified now. But it could be that the Japanese submarines also knew that there was airships patrolling this whole area and just didn't even want to surface because they didn't want to deal with the airships. So each of the airships carried four 350-pound depth bombs in which they could drop on an enemy submarine if need be. So the blimps performed an incredible duty during the war. 